Hey guys, Red Panda Mining here. Hope you're doing well, having a really great day. This video, I am gonna try to lower the temperature on this power phase module here, or VRM as some people call it, this part right there. It is extremely hot. You can see on the thermal camera here, it is showing 93 degrees Celsius. I think if I point lower, it's gonna show 94 there, 94 degrees Celsius. So that is very hot. And some other parts on the motherboard also show a bit of heat. Uh, this part right here is getting hot. This is also hot. Uh, not so much on these parts here. They're under 70 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Celsius. But I do plan on trying to add some copper heat sinks on all of those chips here. Okay, so I got a kit I got off Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. But my whole plan here is to try to lower the temps on this. And I've actually already tested this on a few other Avalon Nano 3s here. So you may see... There's some copper heat sinks I have put on some of these Avalon Nano 3s. And I can verify with you guys that we have dropped a good, I would say, let's say 6 to 7 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the hottest part, we're showing about 85 degrees Celsius, the hottest part there, 84 to 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, and these are all, run. that part there is showing about 86 degrees Celsius. So I wanna show you by adding a few of these copper heat sinks today in this video that we could lower the temp on this VRM because I feel that is, that is just, that is just way too hot. I don't know what you guys think, but let me know down below if you guys think this is way too hot for one of these Avalon Nano 3s, which this is running on high mode right now, okay, right there I have this all taken apart. So let me just explain how I was able to take these apart. It's very easy. There's five screws that you're gonna have to take out. They're under these little rubber grommets here. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And you're gonna need to find a screwdriver that's thin enough to get through, okay? So there is a warranty sticker here. Uh, if you go through that uh, and open it, it's gonna void your warranty with Canon Avalon, okay? If you open it, Warranty's over. So just a disclaimer there, if you are gonna try to do what I'm doing here in today's video, I don't recommend it. Alternatively though, what I was thinking of doing, and I'll probably do it after I'm done with this video, is I'm gonna contact Avalon because the web GUI of these things, like I believe it's running on Brains OS, there's no ability to change the fan speeds of these Avalon Nano 3s. So if there was the ability to change the fan speed on these things, then I would have a bit more confidence that it would help lower the temperatures of of like this part of the area and especially that VRM. Okay, so that would help that would help out a lot. Just a quick thing, this thing has been running for almost five hours, okay? And uh, just going through the uh, configuration page here, I know some people are gonna say this, there is a air speed option here, but that is just to change the, the power modes, low, medium, and high. That doesn't change the fan speeds at all. Right now, the fan speed of this thing, if I go back to overview, the fan speed is about 43% right now. I wish I could have it a bit higher, but then some people may say, Red Panda, what about the sound, the noise? Honestly, I'd have this run louder and lower the temps of this just a bit. But right now, anyone's wondering the sound of these things, it's very low, okay? Like 52 decibels, very, very, quiet. Anyways, back to taking it apart. Once the five screws are out, then you'll want to put it down like this, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that I had a bit of a hard time making sure this part, the USB-C part, is a little bit out, okay? So once you take it out, you might need to pull this up in order to bring down the rest of the all the insides and everything. It should just slide out just like that, okay? So once you do have it out like this, okay, now I just simply have to insert the heat sinks, okay? So very easy. Let's put one heat sink on right now. I'm just gonna choose one of these bigger ones here from the kit I got off Amazon. So these are uh, self-adhesive. They have a little plastic cover on them already, so just have to take that blue stuff off. Then now I'm going to put it on top of the VRM. I have to be mindful the way the, uh, the fins are going because the fans are blowing air this way. All right, so I'm just gonna put it in like this. 
And we already got the baseline. It was uh, almost 95, 94 degrees Celsius without the heat sink. Okay, so now that this is on, okay, now we'll see how much of the heat will transfer over from the VRM to that heat sink now. Okay, so this is, you know, I'm gonna let this go for a bit, but it looks like we've already dropped down 83, we're, down, we're back down to 83 degrees Celsius. So it was about 94, you guys saw that. Let me just verify we are on high mode still, okay? Yeah, we're still on high mode, still mining on high mode. Looking at the top of the heat sink there, it's about, it looks like it's already getting some heat transfer, about 60, 60 degrees Celsius, 50, 62 degrees Celsius, okay? The hottest point, the MOSFET is, uh, the VRM is showing 83 degrees Celsius. So it looks like that helped. Just by placing that copper heat sink on top, we've already dropped about, I'd say 10 to 11 degrees Celsius. But of course the cover is not on and I already showed you the example uh, from those other three I've already done. It's about maybe a six to you know eight or nine degrees Celsius difference. Plus I also have, uh, these covers off as well. This helps a lot. Oh, another thing I did was you guys may see this mesh here I actually pushed this out which you know <laughs> I took them all off of all the other nanos because it was really restricting the airflow From the fans and also the heat it was just letting the heat getting stuck in here So it didn't help that these are on as well and it was you know more than almost 90 degrees Celsius on that power module. So it looks like it's helping. It's definitely helping here. Okay, 83 degrees Celsius now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, uh, there was a few other parts here that were hot. Actually, this one back here, I put a heat sink on that one because that one was also pretty hot as well. I believe there is a little VRM at the back there. I'm not quite sure, but it was definitely hotter than the rest of these other chips, but I'm still gonna place chips on all of these. So let me do that real quick. Okay, I've added four more heat sinks for a total of five heat sinks together, okay? So looking at the temperature now, okay, it's uh, the front chips are really not that hot. The back one that I just talked about, the VRM in the back there, that's showing about 79, okay? It's back there, right beside that capacitor, I already have the heat sink on top of it, 79 degrees Celsius, okay? So that one on the back, is also a troubled one there. Uh, there is no airflow going towards it, so bit of a concern there, but the biggest one was a concern was this one because 95 degrees Celsius on that VRM, in my opinion, was too hot, okay? But now that there is the heat sink on top of it, it's now, yeah, look at that, 82 degrees Celsius. Look like it's coming down now. But granted, uh, once we put on the cover, but I'll keep the side panels off. It will fare much better, at least, you know, better than before when we didn't have a heat sink on, okay, which I showed you guys the difference there. So there you guys go, really. The whole reason why I did this is because I wanna make sure, you know, I wanna keep these things, you know, have longevity because running that type of temperature on these, you know, 24-7, 365, I just, I don't feel good about it. And, you know, I bought this kit off Amazon for like what? you know, 15 bucks for a whole kit of random uh, heat sinks here that I just, they're not really the correct size, but uh, you know, I, you're able to find the correct sizes for most of these, depending which kit you buy at Amazon. Link down below, I'll have a link down below. I get a little kickback at no cost to you if you did decide to buy one of these. But yeah, you know, it's fairly easy. Five screws, pull it out. Again, be mindful of the USB-C that's kind of lodged into this part over here. Uh, just be careful of that when you take it apart. And I also removed the black stuff Stuff here okay there was one on the front and also one on on this uh, which I just used a screwdriver to punch it out uh, the LTT screwdriver and the iFixit kit these were not long enough to go underneath the Canon Avalon Nano 3 you guys can see here so yeah that worked out just fine okay so let me know what you guys think of the difference there of what I just did otherwise I think these are great it kind of sucks that you know you do have to keep these off, you know, if you want the airflow and such. But like I said, you know, I want these to last long. So whether or not that's going to help or not, you know, putting these heat sinks in, I think it does. But you guys let me know your thoughts. I'll see you all in the next video. Hope this helps. Have a good one.
Peace out. Peace out.